Hello my friends and I hope you are well. Happy New Year to you all. Uh, apologies if there's any audio issues whilst I'm recording this by the way. It might be a little bit echoey because I'm currently sat out in the van. Um, I've been sent this Brexit debate by a friend of mine who had the misfortune to be watching it live on Jeremy Vine on 5 at the time and couldn't quite believe what he was seeing nor hearing. I haven't yet watched it, so we can have the pleasure of viewing it together for the first time. So let's just dive straight in, shall we? Just one in 10 of us believe our personal finances are better after Brexit. 35% say Brexit's made things worse. Two thirds believe Brexit has helped fuel the cost of living crisis, according to the survey, which marked the third anniversary on New Year's Eve of the UK leaving the single market. At the end of January, it'll be four years since we officially left the EU. But just 22% of voters believe the decision has been good for the UK overall. Henry, do you think the, the chickens are coming home to roost here? or? It might be. I mean, Project Fear and all that sort of thing. But I don't think we should be going capping hand to the EU at this point. I think it's a little bit early. Uh, we need to allow, yeah, the Brexiteer. Wow. No, 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 no. But I think the dust needs to settle on our uh, comprehensive trade arrangement, the accord that we signed with the EU three years ago. We've also signed something called the CPTPP, so it's a comprehensive... Asia-Pacific. Yeah, yeah, the Asia-Pacific, you know, with the likes of Japan and Brunei and wow, Singapore, Wow, careful, careful, you're sounding like a Brexit No, 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 I'm trying to channel my... <laughs> inner, it's going well. I'm trying to channel my, <laughs> inner, my inner Kemi Badenoch. It's not easy to find, but I'm yeah. going to channel so it. So you're thinking it could go, go better? No. I it think, might go better in the future. And I think if we try to rejoin the EU prematurely, and the Brexiteers will say, you didn't give me enough time. OK, right. So, so, right. so, so it has to be seen well, I just, I just don't know. Failed. What he doesn't seem to realise is there's always going to be some excuse from Brexiteers as to why this has failed miserably. They'll blame it on anything but Brexit itself. Brexit hasn't been done properly. Covid, Ukraine, uh, Israel and Palestine now. Any old nonsense to avoid taking responsibility for the catastrophe that is Brexit. So I'm not really happy to wait five or ten years for it to get even worse. Because more world events will happen along the way and it's just more distractions for Brexiteers to say, oh, yes, uh, we're struggling because now of this or because of this, or because of this. And before you know it, you've got 20, 30 things that have stacked up over the time between the Brexit vote and the period of time we're at for Brexiteers to go, oh, look, this is the litany of reasons why this has failed. I hate this argument. I hate it so much. Confused about... Well, what do you think, Lynn? Would you... Would I'm you... going to continue uh, with what Henry was saying. I, I don't think we've given it enough time. Mm -hmm. um, these, these things take time and we have done loads of deals as you said the asia pacific one it's easier to trade with australia and new zealand um when you actually look at this survey it's only two thousand people oh come on don't attack the survey no, that's the on. last resort yeah no it's not because it's not a big what do you want survey. to interview four thousand look at the high numbers of people that came out to vote yes i know it was still a close shave but we're talking you need to have a proper amount of people taking part but guess what what, what do you mean? Like a referendum? Oh, what? How big do you... Oh, I can't take Lynn seriously. Many people are not taking part in this survey because they're out enjoying their increase of salaries and their wages and small businesses, have, especially those from working class backgrounds, blue collar workers, they've seen their salaries, whether it's builders, whether it's tradesmen, they've seen their salaries increase and this has to be a good thing. Okay. But I always... Yes, wages for the trades she describes have gone up, but there's a critical shortage of construction workers and, and tradesmen. And because there's a shortage, demand is higher. Thus, wages will increase. Although that being said, wages haven't really increased in line with inflation. It's not like wages for construction workers have shot up 25 30 percent and what did she say there people aren't participating in this survey because they're out enjoying their increased 
salaries. What the hell is she talking about? So there's a builder at home, right? He's, you know. Yep. Opens the front door. Hello, mate. What's up? Uh, oh, uh, we're doing a survey about the effects of Brexit on personal finances. Um, are you willing to participate? In uh, sorry, mate. Uh, my wages have gone up, so I'm going to go out because I've got higher wages. So I can't do your survey because I've got to go out to celebrate that my wages are... What a load of shit she talks, honestly. Say one more thing. Yeah. Like with a bad breakup... After your breakup, it never feels good straight away, but give it time. OK, that's what I'm let, me, let me bring in Barbara Want, who's a pro-EU campaigner. And, and I know, well, Henry's obviously thinking we can we can ride this out, Barbara, but you think it, the case is closed now, do you? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing time and again and expecting a different result. Time, we've, we had a referendum seven years ago. All the polls show, all the research show that majority think it was the wrong thing. The research suggests, as this poll shows that you're quoting, that we are poorer, people's household budgets have been affected, a tiny minority think it's gone well. Why do we have to wait? What is the point of just waiting? You know, if a government introduced a policy that made trading for small businesses more difficult, that made household budgets poorer, they'd be thrown out of office. Why do we sit and wait and wait and just keep trying and trying to make it work when it clearly isn't? We're, we're and as for begging, of yep. course we should beg. What's beg. wrong with oh, begging? That's what you I was know, it's well, hubris that got Lynn, this what's country wrong, into What's wrong this with begging, but, Lynn? But firstly, I don't think we should beg uh, anyone. You know, as we mm. like to say, we are Great Britain and we can go it alone and we can do the trade deals. And as oh, here we go. I knew it wouldn't be long before Little Britain made an appearance. Ugh. Why? Why, why, why? The people insist on believing we're some kind of superpower. We can't do anything alone. Are you saying a tiny minority? Would you say the vast majority of working class people that have seen an increase in their salary, are you saying that they're a tiny minority and they don't matter? I'd love to meet some of the people you're referring to, because as far as I'm hang concerned, on, on. as far as I'm concerned, there's a cost of living crisis and people are really struggling with wages. As to this idea, oh, we're Britain, we don't beg. This is exactly the attitude that got us into the mess the first time. It's, it's hubris. We're behaving like toddlers. We can't even have a sensible debate about it. We're behaving like toddlers. Oh, I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to play with my toy. I'm not going to give my toy up, even if you stop me having dinner. Why do we have this attitude? It is not working. Let's do something about okay. it. OK, let's uh, pause here. Let's just bring in a caller. Christopher in Kent, do you agree with Barbara that we just need to go back and, and as Barbara says, just beg them to let us back in? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, just a correction for Barbara, is that we actually left the EU four years ago and the, uh, the, the vote was some time before that, uh, so it hasn't had time. F uh, firstly, though, I'd like to say that I think we're looking through the EU through rose-tinted glasses because we had many recessions uh, whilst we were in the EU and we had the worst banking crisis whilst we were in the EU. Um, all countries in the EU are grappling, grappling with the cost of living crisis at the moment. Germany's not doing particularly well. My brother lives in Spain. His mortgage has gone up, you know, tenfold. Um, so Inflation across the Eurozone is around 2.4%. Italy's inflation, unless I'm much mistaken, is down at 0.6%. The United Kingdom still, despite it dropping, has one of the highest rates of inflation in Europe. That is true. That is fact. It's higher than Germany, who are around 2.5%. It's higher than, like I said, Italy, 0 0.6. Spain are around uh, 3, I believe. We're about equal with the French, but the, the Eurozone average is around 2.5%. As for this whole thing about begging to go back into the EU, the United Kingdom does not have to beg anybody. We need a new government with serious politicians who will go to the European Union and say, good God, the last 13 to 14 years have felt like a bleeding nightmare. Let's just start over and try and unpick this mess. That's what the United Kingdom needs to do. We don't need to go, oh, please. Oh, oh can we rejoin? No, that doesn't need to happen. So for people like Christopher, who is living in cloud cuckoo land, 
that the United Kingdom, again, is a superpower. Denial. Also, I'm sorry to keep ranting on. He mentioned some of the financial crises that have happened whilst we were in the European Union. Well, yes, but our membership of the European Union was not related to these crises. I might be in my house when it gets burgled, for example. But it's nothing to do with me. I'm just there. And also, the idea that a financial crisis in the Eurozone or a financial crisis in the United States or China wouldn't affect the finances of the UK because we're independent and we're outside of all of this is ridiculous. If any major financial market undergoes turmoil, it affects the UK. These people who think, oh, because well, we're outside of all this, we're safe. Delusional. And I think the trouble is that these hardline Remainers and left-wing media such as the BBC and Sky News are deliberately conflating the issues that have arisen since Brexit. See Jeremy Vine's face there. Let's replay that. Look, watch the eyebrow go up. Wait, hold on. Look at that. Oof. Right, let's go. He has a little giggle. And then the eyebrow goes up. BBC, Sky News, left wing. Exactly. Exactly, Jeremy. That have arisen since Brexit, such as Ukraine and um, the uh, COVID pandemic, yes. pandemic, which have brought about a lot of the cost. Let me bring, let me bring issues, Barbara which in. Which have affected all. Which have affected Barbara replies. All. Christopher's right, isn't he, in some of that? I'm such a shame we can't have a debate about this without resorting to slurs and cause, claiming that people are left-wing or right-wing. Look, the EU may not be perfect. Other countries, too, have, have had problems. This idea that somehow it's only good enough if it's totally perfect. When we were in the EU, you cite problems. We were in the EU. We were able to have persuasion and influence. You know, what is a government's role? A government's role is to create prosperity for people and to create power to have a presence on the world stage. We had that. We threw it away. But somehow saying that, that, that this is impossible because people are hardline remainers without having a debate about the fact that it has not worked. And if it hasn't worked, and it was seven years ago that we had the referendum, a whole new generation of people, of okay. young people have come in and said, we don't like this. That is plenty of time. Henry wants to come in. Barbara, I'm more sympathetic to you than to Lynn, I think, on this. But if we try and go back in now before the supposed trade deal with India or the USA. People will say, you didn't give it enough time. And this, this nasty feeling in the country, the, the hardcore uh, Brexiteers will come back in a couple of years at time and say, you didn't give it a chance. And that's why it's better, I think, even though you might think it's a definition of madness, to allow it to play out for a few more years so that you can actually slay it and say, when you go back to the people and say, in a general election, we now want to uh, go back into the European Union, you can say it without any doubt whatsoever. That is so dumb and so naive. As long as it's a piece of string, I think the years we've had is plenty of time. It's a whole new generation who've come through in that time. You know, there's a thing called the Concord fallacy, where the French and British governments kept doubling down on Concord, even though it wasn't working. And the reason they did that was because they put so much money and time and energy into it. And they refused to see the truth and just let it string out for longer than it needed to have done. The same thing is happening here. And this fear that Brexiteers will say this, some people will disagree. There is always going to be disagreement. But the fact is that it has impacted our, our standard of living. It has impacted trade. And trading with Australia or India is not the same as right. trading with our let, let me just give you some, some How messages. long do you want? OK, Candice on Twitter says, where did Brexiteers' promises of prosperity go? Our economy is worse off. Shortages plague shelves. If this is success, what would failure look like? Richard on Facebook says the EU is crumbling. Voting out was the best thing we ever did. 02078622222. So interesting. It's whether we we could be sure as yet that it's failed. I mean, it might be going going about. It might be about to go really really well. I mean, sure Spring, you know, Bowie and Springsteen had two bad albums before yeah. they released. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, 
That's it. Jeremy, if a they didn't get that, dropped by the record company. Those shortages on shelves. Well, we were seeing that in France. We were seeing that in Spain. And how can... What I'm interested to know, about, how can you pinpoint that what we're going through now is specific to Brexit, not COVID, not the Ukraine-Russia war, not what's going on in uh, the Middle East? How? There we have it. The longer this drags out, the more opportunity Lynn May here has to conflate everything with Brexit. She just listed three things there. She might be about to list more. How do you know it's not this, 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 this? <sighs> Why can't he see the, the silliness of his own argument? Be so sure. You can be sure, you can be sure by talking to people whose businesses are suffering. I'm talking to you from North Wales and I know businesses, I know one in particular just down the road who is exporting and doing very well. They won a Queen's Award for export. Uh, they were exporting dairy products to the EU. They have just gone into administration. Cause 100% Brexit because they can no longer access the transportation systems to get their product there. That's just one business down the road. That's how you find out. You talk to small so many businesses. Many businesses have done well because of Brexit. Many have, have done well. I've never met one. <laughs> OK, I can Journalism. Introduce. I don't know what, yeah, I'm trying to think of what... But Barbara, I was just thinking, in a couple of years, we're due to have a review, aren't we, in 2025, and it might be led by Keir Starmer and David Lamia as Prime Minister on Foreign Secretary. What do you think that review could yield? Maybe we need to wait for that, and if it doesn't work after that, then you can say, right, we've tried absolutely everything. We've tried a trade deal with we've India. We've tried... Henry, I hear what you say. We've tried everything. How long do we go we have, on? We've only done Is it, what about, OK, Barbara, let me try this. Is it, if we, the UK, Great Britain, have to go to the EU and we say, please, and you've used the word beg, so you, you're happy with this, please let us back in. How much do you want? How embarrassed? How humiliated do you want us to be? Do you want us on one knee or two? Isn't that basically the most catastrophic event for this country in a thousand years? In a bad position. The most catastrophic event for this country in a thousand years. So the most catastrophic event since 1024 would be for the UK to ask the European Union to rejoin. Is he out of his mind? The most catastrophic event for a thousand years. World War One, World War Two, to name a few from recent history. What's wrong with him? Oh my God! Isn't it, Barbara? Isn't it terrible for us to have to do that? We've embarrassed ourselves already with the mess we've made of it. We can hardly embarrass ourselves anymore. All right, oh two oh seven eight six two double two double two. Do keep your messages coming in. Um, I, it's, it's really interesting how. I thought when when this country voted Brexit, I thought that's it. Settled. That's that's it. Now we can just have debates about other things. In fact, it was just the beginning of a new debate about is, oh, it's the wrong look, kind of. And the thing is, if we did go out, go on, yeah. on on one knee and get candidate state, we'd have to go through candidate status again. Yeah. Uh, the Ukraine, uh, North Macedonia, oh. uh, Moldova, and we had a very good deal. We had exceptions. We were not in the euro and all of that. And they might drive a really hard bargain if we were to try and get back in now. Yeah. Yeah, they, they might do. But, Lynn, you wouldn't want us to go back in. No, these debates always take long. Look at um, Jeremy Corbyn. He was hu a huge sceptic of, of uh, the EU. and so. Wow. I, Lynn May hates everything Jeremy Corbyn stands for. But she's happy to use him as a battering ram for Euroscepticism. So I disagree with him on absolutely everything. Oh, but look, he was a Eurosceptic. So even he... Wanted out. Oh, even Jeremy Corbyn wanted out. Useless. Let me just play that back. Sorry. Hold on. I shouldn't have interrupted so readily. It just made me angry. When people bring up Jeremy Corbyn, they hate him so much and they find one thing they agree with him on. And all of a sudden, they want, you know, he's an ally. Debates always take long. Look at um, Jeremy Corbyn. He was hu a huge sceptic of, of uh, the EU, and so are many other countries, and it's creasing. So why are they so sceptical if the EU is so fantastic? Lots of countries want to get in, though, don't they? But a lot want to come out as well. She worded that like Jeremy Corbyn is a country. Jeremy Corbyn was a sceptic of the EU, and so are many other countries. Sorry? <laughs> the country of Jeremy Corbyn. 
Go. Ukraine, the people, the young people in Ukraine were out on the streets waving EU flags. They are desperate to join the EU because it is a fantastic organization of cooperation, mutual help and understanding, and it has a presence on the world stage. That is why they want to get in. All the the European European countries don't even see eye to eye. We were predicted Grexit, Nedzit, Italexit, Brexit. It's never... All right, thanks for sitting through that with me. I hope you've not lost too many brain cells. A pleasure as always, um, and I'll be back again soon. Cheers.